Okay, so I've been putting off filming this video, um, obviously for reasons because uh, I was pretty upset about it and it's, it's a sad video to make, but I think I should make it because I think it's important to talk about these things because I wasn't really prepared going in on how hard it would be. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name's Harrison and I was the proud owner of two ferrets. So I say that because now I'm just the owner of one ferret because I lost um, one of my ferrets about two weeks ago. Um, his name is Brutus and uh, he was about five. So um, he's the first pet that has been like mine that I had like since baby and I was like the sole caretaker of him uh, that I've lost. It's tough because like this animal like relies on you and like puts all their trust in you and you're there to take care of them. It's a really hard feeling when you can't help them. Even though like you made that promise, like I did everything I could. I don't have any regrets on how it happened, but it's just a very helpless feeling. I miss him a lot. Um, it's really quiet without him. And I was really nervous about Sawyer, my other ferret. Um, not being able to cope with losing a, a mate um, but she's doing okay so that's nice that's nice she's actually being pretty playful with me and loving so she looks she's fine uh, but that was something that I was worried about but um, yeah I just kind of wanted to talk about um, what happened to him so I got Brutus when I was in my third year of university I was going into my senior year actually so it was like was around there so I've had him for about had him for about five years and it, it just happened really suddenly like a ferret's lifespan is like six to eight years and I wasn't really expecting this at all like he's turning five um he was very lively wasn't showing any signs of aging like well he was getting like a little bit slower but nothing nothing alarming at all just like the typical aging process um he had stopped he had he's very healthy like my ferrets I've been well, my ferret now but my ferrets um were very healthy like i didn't have any issues with them at all and then this just came out of nowhere and i was really unprepared so what happened um like a few weeks ago my ferrets go on pee pads and i noticed that his poops were getting really small and he was having a hard time like pushing it out um but ferrets have like a pretty active digestive system and their metabolism is very fast so I've seen them have like weird poops before and it goes away after like a day. So I was just like, okay, this will pass. This is just something that is going, he's going through and he'll be fine. So I gave it like a day and then he, it still was happening, but he was acting fine. So I was like, okay, it'll probably pass. So then I gave it another day and then he started acting pretty lethargic. Like he was still eating, he was still drinking, but he was, he, he you could tell he was like in pain. He was like shaking a little bit and like he was just like closing his eyes and that like that, that just declined very, very fast. So I was like, okay, I gotta take it to the vet. So I called my vet. Uh, I was on a Saturday and I booked my appointment and I went, I took him. They did x-rays on him. We thought it was a blockage. Like I was Googling and it, and it sounded like something was blocking and like his intestines. So I was nervous for that, but they x-rayed him. Nothing came back. They did a blood test. Um, his glucose levels and everything were fine. So they just gave me this medication and they said, um, just give it to him like twice a day and it will like harden up his stool and he'll be fine in like 24 to 48 hours. So I got home and I was giving him the medication and he didn't want it at all like it was a great flavored one and he really hated it um so i tried giving it to him and he would throw it up and i knew that he had diarrhea he was losing fluid and i didn't want him to continue to throw up water or spit up things so i was like okay i'm just gonna not try that i tried it a couple times i did it in the morning he still like threw it up so as thinking that that was bad um and then so the next day was sunday my vet was closed so i had to go and call a vet that was open that treated exotic pets because ferrets are exotic i think the fire alarm's going off i don't know um but yeah so there was a vet in guelph that my vet told me about and so i took him there and they did the same thing like they x-rayed him nothing um blood test came back fine uh he was just de dehydrated he stopped eating 
So that's when I knew I needed to take him. I was like, okay, he won't eat my treats. Like, he won't eat anything. Um, so they gave him, like, subcutaneous fluid to help him with his, um, get his fluids back up. And then they gave me the same form of medication, but they gave me, like, a liver-flavored one. And he didn't throw it up, but he didn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do it. And, um... And eventually, like, he started to, he started to, to throw it up. So, um, I tried everything. I gave him, like, wet cat food. I gave, I moistened up his own food. I gave, I tried giving him treats. I tried giving him everything, and he just wouldn't eat. Um, so I took him to, um, so this was, yeah, so this was Sunday. So I gave him, like, another day. And then Monday came around, and I was like, you know what? He's not doing well. Like, he was slowing right down. He was sleeping a lot, and... I was just really feeling pretty helpless. Like, I couldn't get him to eat anything. So I took him to another vet in Guelph. Um, and this one's, like, a, the, a pretty high-tech one. It's, there's, a, there's a really good veterinarian uh, school in Ontario. It's, called, it's in Guelph. It's University of Guelph. So I went to their place, and they have specialists there. They have, like, 24-hour staff that can watch the animals, like, put them in the ICU and stuff like that. So I brought him there. And they took a look at him and they were like, okay, well, we're going to have to keep him overnight. So yeah, so they kept him overnight. They did more tests on him. They couldn't find anything. Um, again, uh, it was just, everybody was just very confused, but they were giving him food and they were giving him fluids. So then they called me the next day and they were like, okay, we want to try this and we want to try this. They were like, it could be, it could be like one of five things. So they were trying all these different things for him. And then they were like, his calcium was dropping, so we have to put him in the ICU because he could potentially have a seizure. And I was like, what the heck? Like, it just happened so fast. So then they took him to the ICU, um, and I went to visit him. And he was just, like, laying there. Um, they had, like, a little IV in his paw. Um, and I went to see him because the vet was talking about putting him down and, like, that's like an option um so i went to see him just so i could like be like okay i want to like see if he has life in his eyes and if if he's okay and so i was petting him and then um and then he um he didn't really register see he, he was on pain medication so i, I think he's kind of out of it um but he he went and uh and he ate the food in front of me he just like took a mouthful of food, ate it, and then went back and laid down. And for me, the biggest thing was I was like, he's not eating. He's not going to survive if he doesn't eat. And he just ate in front of me when I was about to go and like put him down. So that to me was hope. So I was like, okay, do what you need to do. Give it another day, and then let me know if he's improving because he's eating. Like that's it's a big deal. So the vet like agreed with me and said like. No, we, they really liked him, so they wanted to do everything that they could. Um, but for me, like, the main thing was um, his comfort level. Like, I didn't, I didn't want to be in pain. I didn't want to put him through surgery or anything like that. But I was like, okay, if you think that you can do this with, like, intravenous or, like, whatever you're doing without having to go through surgery, do what you need to do. As long as he's okay, like, he's on pain meds and he's fine. They're like, yeah, he's... He's, he's looking more comfortable, so then the next day they called me and they're like, yeah, he's not eating. They were like, okay, well, we could try this thing. We could try steroids, but if it's this thing, it, that will hurt him. Um, but that's the only option that we have is to try these steroids. But if it's not, it, it, he will be in pain. So when they said that to me, like, and I thought about it, I was like, I don't want to put him through this anymore. Like, I went to see him, like, a couple times and... It was just really sad, like, he was just laying there and, like, in this incubator all by himself, and it just wasn't what I wanted for him, and, like, they were saying, like, they were saying to me, like, his age is a factor. He's had diarrhea for, like, five days, and it's not getting any better, it's actually getting worse. Um, they were like, he could pull through, but there's a very, very big chance that he won't. So I was like, what's the point in putting him through all of this if it's if he's not even gonna get better? Like if they would have told me, you need to spend this much and 
sorry. Uh, they were like, if, if you spend this much, he'll be fine. Like, if they could give me a guarantee or if they could give me, like, a 70%, 80% chance, like, or something, like, that they could see was wrong, but they couldn't find anything, and they were just shooting in the dark what was going on with him. So, uh, I had to make the decision to put him down. Um, so, that day I went, and they brought him to me because I was like, I need to see him. Um, I need to see if he's okay, um, and then I was going to make my decision on what we were going to do, so they brought him in, and uh, it was just really sad, they, he, uh, they had his little IV in, and it was bandaged up, and they had to, like, shave his stomach because they were probably doing some ultrasounds or something, so, and, and then he just, like, was, he was so out of it, like, he, he was just, they put him like in my arms and he was just um he was just laying there and he's not the type of animal that like sits with me like he does like when he's really tired he'll sit on my lap and let me pet him but for the most part he doesn't do that and he just was in my lap and they gave him to me and then they left the room and it was just me alone in the room with him uh, and it was actually really nice to have that to um just have that those like last few moments with him um so they put him in my lap and then they left and i was able to just like hold him yeah and he was just he had his he had his head like on my on my chest and he had his eyes closed and like he didn't look like he was like in pain he was just like kind of peaceful and i was just able to hold him and pet him and tell him that i loved him and, um, it was nice to have that like, I was able to sit with him for about 15 minutes and I just knew that he just he needed to, to go and I needed to let him go it wasn't fair for me to keep putting him through all of this um, when he was in he was in so much discomfort he just was not himself and I just looked into his eyes and I could tell so I said to the vet that I was like you know I think I think we're going to have to put him down uh, I don't want to do this to him anymore. And he, they were like, yeah, we understand. So um, they came in with all the, the stuff that they were going to do because he had his IV and um, he, uh, they, they just put it through the IV. So they started out with like a saline to make sure that it was working, um, which it was, and then they had another, like, sedative sort of thing where they put it in and he just, like, calmed right down, um, which was, it was nice to see him, like, just be, like, serene, and then, um, and then they put the, the drug in that, that kills them, um, and I was, I was holding him the entire time so I could, like, feel, I could, like, feel him stop, like, breathing, and I could see, I could see, like, look into his eyes and see, like, the life go out of him. And it was, like, I've never seen anything die before like that. Um, it was, it was very sad, but it was, like, almost peaceful in a way because I knew he wasn't suffering anymore. Um, so I felt, I felt really good about my decision to, not good, but I felt like I did the right thing. Like, I stayed with him even though I knew it was going to be hard and I held him like when, when it happened and um, I made sure that he went with dignity and like he wasn't just it wasn't just like holding on to him and putting him through so, like surgery after surgery or like procedure after procedure I, I just knew that he needed to go and I felt I felt like I did the right thing um I, I loved him, I cared about him a lot, and obviously I wanted him to get better, and I would have spent anything that I could have uh, to save him, but there was no saving him. So, yeah, that was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Uh, but, uh, it's, it's nice to know, like, even though I'm really upset about it, it's nice to know that I cared about something that much. It's just really weird that he's not around anymore it's there's a there's a void definitely without him here um but i'm not gonna get another ferret 
I'm done with ferrets. Um, if Sawyer showed signs of like really being depressed, I would consider getting another one, but she's doing fine. Um, I've spent a lot of time with her, so uh, I don't know if she knows, but she, she's, she hasn't been acting weird. She's been eating fine, uh, drinking fine, going to the bathroom fine, so she's showing no signs of anything. So that's a huge relief, but yeah, I'm not gonna get another ferret. Uh, but yeah, so maybe my message is uh, I love your animal while you can. Uh, don't take them for granted. And uh, make sure you put money aside for them or get pet insurance because this was a huge, huge expense that I wasn't really prepared for. Like I'm doing fine. I'm, I'm going to survive. I don't, I'm not, I'm not out of money or anything like that, but it did set me back quite a bit. So put money away if you can uh, for your animals because they're animals. Like as, as much as we'd love to think that they'll be around forever, they're not. Um, and they're aging much faster than we are and they they could need medical attention. So it's just my little message that I can take from that. Uh, but yeah, so anyways, bye. <laughs>